Hello and welcome to TorontoWebsiteDeveloper.com. I am P.D. Orsini, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In the seventh video tutorial of our 10-part video tutorial series on PHP uh, for Drupal, rather an introduction to PHP, I want to introduce you to loops. We're going to be covering four different types of loops. There's a lot to get going on, so I want to get started sooner rather than later. Uh, and we're going to be moving quickly. But before we get started, I just want to show you at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store. Uh, all of my longer video tutorial series are available here for sale. This introduction to PHP will be available once I finish it off. Uh, I appreciate all sales. They really help me to keep the video tutorials coming, keep them free and keep them frequent. Uh, additionally, if you're not interested in purchasing a series, please just give this video a tutorial a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube. Let me know how it's helped you out. I appreciate that feedback and also helps promote these video tutorials on YouTube. Additionally, always remember, subscribe to the channel. I appreciate that. Uh, I do look at that subscriber count uh, monthly. That said, I'm going to close this up, head back over to localhost, ytphp and tutorial7.php. If you're not sure why I'm here, first video tutorial shows you that I set up a local host. This output that I'm getting from this multi-dimensional array is what we ended off with in tutorial 6. I just want to continue on with that. So I'm going to go back to the code. You'll see I'm actually looking at this multi-dimensional array by using a print r statement and passing in my uh, array. This is kind of ugly. I can't actually get into my array here uh, to see all that I want. So what we want to do is introduce you to a new concept called a for loop. And so what for loop allows us to do is actually go through an entire array and print out elements in that array. So in order to do that, I'm just going to copy this starting lineup back. And I'm going to paste it into my uh, script here. And now what I want to do is uh, show you the syntax for a for loop. First thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, declare a variable. And so what I'm doing is i is equal to zero. You'll see that a lot in any type of development. And the reason for that is because when we're using a uh, an array that has uh, numerical uh, keys, right? So it's uh, uh, an unstructured or structured, I, whichever one it is, can't remember which one. Um, you know, these keys are always going to be numbers, right? So we start off by zero because this first element in the array is always going to be a zero. Next thing that we add is a condition to exit upon. So my condition to exit upon is going to be i is less than six. And that's because I know that this fifth element is Peter, right? Um, and so once it hits five, it's going to print out Peter, and then there's going to be no more elements to print, so I want it to get out of there. And you'll notice that Eclipse has uh, got rid of my red X here. And that's because the for statement is valid just as it is. But what I'm going to do is add in another expression here, and this is the... Um, the equation to uh, evaluate every time we go through this loop. So every time you successfully get through the for loop, it's going to increment i so that i will become i plus 1. That's what the plus plus is there. So now what I'm going to do is just go starting line up, and I meant print, sorry, if you're wondering what I'm doing. Print i, and then I'm going to add a br there. So I should have put a print statement at the beginning there. I'm go ahead, save that, go back to my page, reload it. And you'll see I get the entire array printed out one by one in a nice, easy to see um, print statement. Uh, I don't get this ugly print R. Now, as you remember, I, I said I could take this out uh, and do this here. So what I'd like to do is just go I plus uh, plus. And then if I reload this page, you'll see I get the exact same thing. So this um, Incrementer doesn't have to be at the end. It can be anywhere within the print statement. You just have to make sure you add it. If you don't, you're going to get an error. So you'll see here if I save this and reload this page, this script is going to run forever and it's going to print out SAM about you know 100,000 times before it runs into a problem. And the reason for that is because I don't ever tell it um, how to increment this. So I will always be less than six. It will always be equal to zero. And so that's a problem. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to, I don't have to do I++. I can do I is equal to I plus two. I have to add i, and save this, go back, and you'll see I'm getting all these SAMs here. So I'm just going to stop that, reload this page, and you'll see I get Sam, Rob, Simon. And that's because zero, two, four, right? Uh, and as well, you'll notice I can take this out um, if I want to do something complex, and I can print it down here, uh, and it'll be the exact same thing. Reload that. Um, and you'll see I'm getting the same thing. And that's why, um, you know, that's a little bit handy if you're doing some complex uh, for statement, you can do your evaluations down here at the end. So that's the for statement. This is great if we know how many elements we actually have. Um, and obviously we could add in a variable here and start playing with things. Um, but let's say that we didn't and we want to use a while statement. Um, or let's say, sorry, we didn't. I'm going to show you another uh, loop and that's called the while loop. 
And so while it's going to be very similar to the for loop in that we're going to have a similar structure here, but things are going to be in different places. So again, I'm going to add this while i is equal to zero, but you'll notice it's outside of the loop. And then here I'm going to say i is less than six. Oops. And then in here, I'm going to actually increment. Right. And I would recommend always writing as your first step. Um, the incrementer or how you're going to actually get out of this loop. Uh, because if you don't and you forget this, which is pretty common, you'll never get out of, out of this actual loop. So here I'm just going to print starting line up. And I'll go ahead and print I with a BR. But you know, I forget to actually, oops, I forget to actually print my incrementer. Go ahead, reload my page, and I get this never ending SAMs everywhere, right? So always add that first. Um, it's just something that I find helpful. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. I don't know. Go ahead and save that. Now, um, this is something, uh, you know, we're looking at a similar situation here. We know how many elements are in this array, so that's great. So I can say greater than six. But if I don't know that and it's dynamic, I can make this, um, I need to change this up so it's no longer six. And I do that by adding another variable. And I'm going to make this a count variable. And what this is going to be equal to is going to be count. I'm going to add in starting lineup. Now remember, um, or rather, I don't expect you to know what count is. This is a PHP function, just like other PHP functions that we've used. Uh, I pass in the starting lineup. What this does is it counts how many elements I have in there and assigns that to the value or to the variable count. So this will be equal to six. And so here I can go uh, eyes, you know, less than count, go ahead and save that. Go back over here, reload our page. And you'll see how to get my entire array um, printed out properly, Sam through Peter. Uh, and obviously I could use my count as I is less than in a for statement, um, but this is a little bit neater. So that's the while statement. Um, I do want to show one other way that you can use a while statement. And you'll see a similarity to this in a lot of PHP development when you're looking at database objects. I'm going to get rid of these conditions here. Get rid of this as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another PHP function to actually um, iterate through this different array. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this variable is equal to, so while item is equal to array pop, I'm going to pass in starting lineup. Oops, I'm going to print item here. And then I go br. I save this. What this actually does, array pop is a function that pulls out elements from an array. So it's going to take this last element, Peter, and it's going to pass it to the uh, variable item, the value rather. So if I go ahead and I save this and I reload this, oops, array pop, any problem here? Because starting lineup, go ahead and save this, reload this page, and you'll see that it prints out the entire array just like normal. Um, and that's because when it gets to the end of the array and the array is empty, uh, it can't pull anything else, it will return false. So this condition will be false uh, and it won't go through the actual loop. So if I go ahead and I print our, oops, and I pass in starting lineup for you, save that, reload the page, you'll see that it'll be an empty array. Um, again, I didn't have to create a variable with the initial value and then create some kind of condition and then actually uh, increment over a ray pop handle that for me. And you'll see that a lot in Drupal when you're looking at database objects and you'll, you know, you'll use a, a fetch object um, for a different row. Uh, and then once you can't fetch any more rows, it'll actually get out of this while statement. Uh, so that's why I wanted to show you that kind of concept, three lines as opposed to the six that you would need, or rather five for creating in a value and all that rest of that stuff. So that's the while loop. Next type of loop that we can look at is called the do loop. And so the do loop is very similar to the for and the while loop, except your condition is at the end. So what happens here, sorry, those should be squiggly brackets. No, actually those should be open brackets. We're gonna print, we're gonna do something, right? Something that we enter while this the value is true, right? So I'm just going to grab some code uh, that I've got over here to actually show you what I'm talking about here. Because you won't actually really see these too often because the actual evaluation happens at the end of the actual code running. So if I go ahead and I save this and I go back to my page here and I reload this, 
um, you'll see that I stopped at i is equal to 10, right? Whereas, oops, whereas normally we wouldn't get to that last element, right? We would start at zero and we would get to nine. This becomes problematic when we want to go ahead and we want to go print starting line up, pass an i, save that. Now, just take a quick guess what you think will happen here. Go back, reload my page, reload it, and if you thought there was going to be, oops, did I forget to increment? Yes, I did forget to increment. Save that. So if you thought I forgot to increment, you're pretty smart. Um, but then you'll see, um, save this, go back over here, reload this page. Um, if you thought we'd get an error because we've got this offset, we're actually outside of the element, uh, the array, you're also right. Um, that's because what ends up happening here is we get to element six. It tries to print element six, which doesn't actually exist. So that becomes a problem. Um, and I can just get rid of that echo statement. Uh, so that's why you don't really see these do while loops too often, um, because the actual condition comes at the end of the loop. And so it evaluates whatever's in here. Um, but again, for um, effort of being complete, I wanted to show you the do while loop. Last loop that I'm going to show you is perhaps one of the more powerful, I think, and that's the for each loop. So what happens here is you're going to pass in an array. So I'm going to say starting line up, and then you're going to say as, and you can pass in some variable name. Uh, so I'm just going to say key. And what that will be, key now takes the value, and this should be line up, key will take the value of the first element that you're looking at. So if I go ahead and I print key, and I should go br, save that, go here, reload the page, you'll see I get Sam, Mike, Rob, John, Simon, Peter. Now, additionally, if I went C, L, R, D, let's say left D, right D, goalie, save that, what do you think will happen? Reload our page, we get the exact same thing. That's a bit of a problem because we it's not zero, one, two, three, four, five. These are actually keys that we wanna see. So we can access those if we did starting lineup as key, an equal sign, our uh, arrow there, and then we're gonna go with a value. And so now what we can do is go print, and we'll go add this ourselves, and then go value and then add our BR, and we'll save this, go back over here, reload the page, and you'll see that I can get my C, Sam, L, Mike, so I can get my key and my value here. And so that becomes pretty powerful because you can actually uh, grab your key, um, you know, if you're not using zero, one, two, three, four, five, you're actually using some value in there as a key, uh, so you have an associative array, you wanna be able to grab that key, and you can do that with the for each statement. But you can see why for each is so powerful because I could have however many, um, you know, elements that I want here, um, and for each, we'll treat this the exact same way uh, despite that. So I can go ahead and reload this page. Um, and I'm obviously getting a problem because I didn't save it. Nope. Oh, that's what a dumb problem. I just rewrote the element 10,000 times or the array 10,000 times. So just take my advice for it. Um, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, uh, you'll see, a, you know, I'm redefining C and redefining L, C, L, all that kind of crap. Um, so I'm not actually creating different elements as I would if it were a um, uh, structured array. Now, last thing I wanna show you, this was the last loop that I wanna show you, the for each. It's something you'll see quite often in Drupal. Uh, it's for iterating through an entire array, and that's because Drupal is built on all kinds of different crazy arrays. Um, but let's say we didn't wanna go through the entire array, we wanted to leave if some condition ended up being true. We can easily do that with an if statement. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test um, to see whether or not the key is equal to right D. And if it is, I wanna get out of here. So I'm gonna go and add a break statement. And you remember break because we use it in our switch statement. It's gonna be a similar functionality. Go back over here, reload the page, and you'll see that it no longer prints that. It actually gets out of the entire loop. So if this were C, save this, reload the page, it's gonna print C, get to that, um, it's gonna to get to this evaluation, and then it's going to actually break, get out of the entire loop, stop running the loop. But let's say you wanted to check C, and if it was true, don't print that, but print everything else. So you don't want to see the center, but you want to see everybody else. Easy enough to do. What we're going to do here is I'm going to put this down below, 
And then what I'm going to do is use a continue keyword. And then I'm going to print this. So if I go here, I reload my page, you'll see it prints everything but C. And the reason for that is it looks at the keys as C. Yes, it is. And then it'll go continue. And what that means is don't execute any of the other code within this for each statement, but continue going through each element, right? And you can actually uh, make this a little bit nicer by just doing the continue just like that and save that and reload. You'll see I get the exact same thing. So that's it. Those are loops. Uh, we looked at the for, the while, the do while, the for each, and then the two keywords, uh, break and continue. Hopefully this wasn't too fast. If you have any questions, please pose them in the comments. Let me know. And if this video tutorial helped you, give it a thumbs up. Hopefully we'll see you for the next one. Thanks very much.